Welcome to Mommy Tips. I am Wendy Brokaw. And this is... I'm Carla Gugina. No, I'm Paula Marshall. (laughs) I'm not Carla. I love Carla. Um, We're back. We're back. We we took a little hiatus, but um, we're back. Summertime. And just to remind you, we're just two moms talking politics and... Angry mothers. You forgot that. No. Angry... Angry. Angry mama bears. Concerned. And, and I think we should introduce our guest, John Ferreter, who can really introduce himself. Why are you here? Who are you? Why are you here? Well, I'm here because a woman named Marguerite Brokaw saved my life nine years ago. That would be my stepmom. That's exactly right. And uh, your father gave me a job many, many years ago, and I was a, an agent at the William Morris Agency, where I ended up co-running the TV department and was on the board with your dad. Uh, up until the William Morris uh, Endeavor merger. I was the guy who voted against the merger and as a result was basically thrown out of the agency. I was the only one who actually read all the documents. So what was it, what was interesting was at that time I was sick and I didn't know it. I had uh, contracted MRSA, which we don't really know how I got it, but they assumed when I had a procedure done at, um, at Cedars. And about two days after the merger, I essentially passed out and I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. And I was rushed into the uh, hospital and the woman who saw me when they brought me in was Marguerite. And she brought me in and got me immediate attention. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today. So I owe so her. Say, wow. So my, my stepmom used to be a nurse at Cedars and that's actually where she met my father, who was the uh-huh. head of the William Morris Agency. And uh, I didn't know this. Yeah. Little, Story. Little trivia. So um, my dad, aside from being a super agent was also had a side job of, of helping people medically. And a big mm-hmm. part of that was Maggie was connected because she was a, a nurse at Cedars. So, yeah, so. The, the greatest thing the agency ever did for me was in, in times like that, they would stop everything that was going on to help people if it came to medical situations and stuff. The relationships with all the hospitals, but particularly with Cedars, were unparalleled. But your dad was really one of the first super agents. You know, Lou Wasserman and your dad, he was the chairman of the board, rest his soul. He was always good to me. He was just an unbelievable guy, and I learned a tremendous amount from him. But um, I was there for the better part of 19 years, was um, thrown out, literally was locked out, and uh, which led to a pretty big lawsuit. And after that was resolved, I um, started the entertainment division for a company called Octagon. And when my contract ended, we started our own company called The Alternative, where I work with talent and produce shows and movies and Broadway. We just finished the Name That Tune pilot and I play music as well. So I try to keep a, a much more balanced uh, life and try to keep everything fairly zen as much as you can in this in this town. Yeah, well, you're one of the good guys and I and, and being in this town, in this business, there's very few that are cut from that cloth. Mm-hmm. And my dad, I think, was one of the good guys. I think you're one of the good guys. And, and he was. And um, we also know each other because you know, when you're at an agency as big as William Morris, mm-hmm. um, you're, there's different divisions. So at William Morris, you worked with a lot of on-air talent. That was your... Why? Well, yeah, I, I, I had the greatest beginning. I started working for an agent who was in what was then called the old variety department. Mm-hmm. And there was really no variety TV, so we had to, you know, eat what we could kill, essentially, as far as deals went. So I started day two, the agent came to me and said, I start dialysis this week and I don't want anyone to know because if there's a health issue with your representative, people leave you. And I said, oh, no one's going to leave you. You're the greatest guy. And he said, no, they will leave immediately because anything that's health related, the clients think it's a death sentence and you're not going to be able to service them. So as a result, for about 16, 17 months, I helped him every day with his dialysis. We either did self-dialysis in the office, in which case I would have to smuggle in the bags of fluid he put in. So you and kept his unbelievable. secret. And, and smuggle out the, the waste, basically bags of urine. Um, and then the other days I would drive him to the dialysis center, which was down on Pico. And we did it for about 17 months until, or 17, 18 months, until William Morris uh, purchased Triad. Mm -hmm. And they merged the company together, and that's when his medical condition was revealed. So they retired him. I was told I was being fired because I had no agent to work for. So I went in and I had to lobby, you know, some people in the middle of a merger saying, I don't think you want to get rid of me. And a couple clients called and said, this guy's gold. You can't get rid of him. John Denver called. The Oak Ridge Boys Mm -hmm. called. Uh, Marie Osman called. A couple people just advocated for me at that point. And your dad decided to keep me. So... 
anytime I get a call from whether it's Sandy or David, your brothers, or you or anyone, or Lauren, anyone I can help, I'm always happy to do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we, 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 I should hmm. tell you that hmm. the other day I was up at the Glen, stopping through, and was on the phone with mm -hmm. Andrew's wife, Felicia. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, I was like, oh, gotta go, because I saw John and I got very excited and we got into a whole conversation because one of your big clients is Piers Morgan. Yeah, and she started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> she does that. It was great. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, it went from what, zero to a hundred in like two seconds? In, yeah, less. And then I will say, after you said, we had a, we had a conversation mm -hmm. about, because in my mind, I don't know, why do I have this impression that um, there's got to be a reason why I have a, an impression that Piers is a, is a Trump guy? No, he's not. He's, Piers, Piers is, a, is a, in an interesting position. He's friends with Donald Trump because he won the first Celebrity Apprentice. He didn't vote for him. Obviously, he's British, so he didn't vote. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that he would have if he was here. He, If you read his columns, about 75% of his columns, he really goes after the president for certain things he does. But Pierce sh shares a very interesting belief, and, and I share the same belief, is we can yell as much as we want, but if you yell at someone, you're never going to have a dialogue with them. So, you know, everyone that's yelling about Trump this, Trump this, Trump this, we can all do it. That's not really getting much done. What gets done is when you actually get in a room with someone and you realize what Trump is notorious for, and I did deals with him for years at William Morris, and I repped Ivanka for a number of years and worked with her, so I know them pretty well. Oh, and don't in, you want to dive in? And, and we will. <laughs> and in fact, the last one-on-one -on -one interview that the president did, we produced. Piers and I produced it. It was at the end of January of this year in Davos. And it, right. it hasn't been seen in the States. It was only seen uh, overseas. And it's a I, great interview. I, but there was, uh, and again, maybe I'm wrong about this. It was I mean, Pierce is known for his tough questions, and he could be a little snarky and, yeah. you know, try, tough. Try and being his agent and manager for the last <laughs> I 15 imagine, years. I can't. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't imagine. And no, I he's, heard, he's the greatest guy. He, he literally will give you the shirt off his back. What Pierce doesn't like in any form is hypocrisy. So he will call people oh. when they're doing whatever. And it doesn't matter whether you're left, right, whatever. But he was criticized, though, for being very, like, throwing softball questions in that interview. Correct? No. I mean, no one saw it. As far as, as, far, been, as, been, as far as the, you, look, look, here's the thing. Well, you were there, so you I, tell I us. I was there. I was one of the producers. Do you feel like so, he called him out on his He absolutely did. He called, he, he called him out on, on the hunting. He called him out on equal rights. He called him out on all kinds of stuff. I'll show you the interview. The interview we offered it to a number of the broadcasters here, and they didn't want to take it. Because? Because they didn't want to take it, because they didn't produce it. Okay. So there's an ego with every news division has, you know, they wow. have a God complex. And if they don't produce it and they don't control it, oftentimes they don't want these things. Mm -hmm. They all aired parts of it because there's a, a fair usage that they were able to do. But I'll, I'll show it to you. No, he's, you can't walk into a room in the middle of an interview and say, you tyrant, blah, 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 because then the interview is over. Right. Of course. Not. It's, yeah. it's, it's a boxing match. And you got to jab and jab and jab, and then you go for the things that you go for. He actually, he got Trump to apologize on a couple of things. Apologize? I don't think I've ever I, heard those I would words. Need the literal that. apology, like, I'm sorry I did this? He said, or? he said, if you believe that that's what I did, then, then I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry because that wasn't the intention. That's a roundabout so, apology. So, but it's still an apology. So, but here's the thing. What I liked about our conversation the other day, I was having coffee with Dr. Aaron. And the, what I really liked about the conversation is you Im immediately got passionate about everything. And we know each other so well because I had put together the Dr. Drew show for mm -hmm. HLN and Wendy was one of the producers on it. So I would see Wendy and Bert and, you know, the whole, and Drew and the whole gang there. Right. And it was always fun. I mean, because I had that show and I had peers and they were right. operating out of the same studio. So I used to see mm -hmm. peers in the So in I was, the there, room, I was right? there every day and I would yeah. go by and see Bert or see Drew or see Wendy or see peers or whatever. And it was a blast. Yeah. Those were four really, really fun years. I'm not gonna lie. Those those were really great, really great yeah. days. It was it was it was a blast. I didn't really know Piers, um, but I would see him in the makeup chair. Um, he, was, he intimidated me a little bit. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Like you know, I was very happy to be working with Dr. Drew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. I I I will. I have to backtrack a little bit because then I I did do a little bit more digging on peers. I'm open-minded. Sure. I want to say that. Yeah. I consider my, myself, which is part of my real problem with Trump, is I have such a sense of justice and fairness, and I think it does come from my dad. 
and I just can't. I get my, the insides, my they burn when I see something that's unfair. So I, I was like, I had to dig a little deeper after our conversation, and I'm happy to say that that I I take back what I said about Pierce, <laughs> in the sense that I think he can be a tough ass. Don't get me wrong. Oh, like, he's very much so. He's um, he's very tough. He's, yeah, I mean, he he's, can be nasty. You know, when you run, he, he was the youngest editor of a newspaper in the UK, and and he ran a couple of the, the big newspapers. And he's really, he was groomed by two people. He was groomed by a, a very famous editor named Kelvin McKenzie, who was famous for literally kicking his reporters in the butt down the hall until they could get a story. I mean, these were the, the body drinking, you know, everybody going after each other all day long. Uh, UK, you know, English tabloids. Mm -hmm. So Piers was raised in that environment. So he kind of has that philosophy, hey, I may lose today on something, but you're not going to beat me. It's the Serena Williams thing. Serena Williams said that to me one time. I said, what's your philosophy when you take the court? She goes, you know, she says a prayer to Jehovah, who she's a Jehovah's witness. And she said, I say a prayer to Jehovah. And then I go and I go out with the mindset that although I may lose today, I'm not going to get beat. And Piers is the same way in terms of his approach. We both have this philosophy that shy does not play. So whatever you do, don't be boring. So he likes to stir the pot. And there, there are, time, so, so there are times does, when I know he's doing it intentionally. Okay, so he does it for effect. Um, well, of course. Sense. I well, I was looking last night at, uh, and Paula, I, mm -hmm. Paula and I were texting back and forth. Um, and and Paula's saying, who is John Fair? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have this thing called Google. <laughs> I found out. And, um, you know, I actually found that I share um, Pierce's, you know, feelings. I think we do have a real problem with immigration. I don't think anyone's denying it. It's just being lumped into just being a Democrat. Therefore, we want open borders. That makes me nuts. The that makes me nuts. Is. No. And in fact, there, there's two criticisms going on that. Well, o Obama, no one said anything about Obama. Three million people mm -hmm. were deported. Well, yeah, that's the whole thing. He he's trying to work with immigration. What he didn't do and where it's getting really twisted Rip families apart. is ripping families apart. And I don't know that there is a defense. I don't. And this is a line. This is a line. I think I think period. it's in, I think it's indefensible. It is indefensible. I don't think you ever tried. You, you can't say you're for family values and then rip a family apart. I want to I want to hear the religious leaders and and at least a few of them did write a letter to Jeff Sessions and and call him on his shit. I think that that is the why we've seen Trump now for the first, yeah, first time. time. Well, we kept saying walk it back. Will something will will this be it? Cuz every day I wake up and I go well, what is it going to take? When are people going to change? The the religious the the I mean, even my brother, I'm dying to text him to go, is this bad? Is is this enough? Yes, but you know what? He oh. did walk it back, but I don't know if kind you of. know this. We we were bantering on the way over here because we this is all we do all day. Is we, we don't talk about shoes. We don't shop. No, we, we don't do much yeah. except this. Did you, um? have you ever read any of uh, Trump's books? I don't no. touch oh. anything that has no. Trump near it. Okay, no. so long before he was running for president and doing all this stuff, he wrote a number of books. And when Piers, um, I got a call that NBC was going to do The Apprentice as a celebrity version, and Piers was the main judge on America's Got Talent the first uh, six seasons. All right. And I got a call, and they said, we'd like Piers to do it. And, and they had, before I even called him, they had called Piers, and he sent me a note. He said, do you think I should do this? And I said, do it. The email I sent back to him was, do it. And he said, why? And I said, because Donald Trump is P.T. Barnum. He is P.T. Yes. Barnum. He's one, yes. He's one of the yes. single biggest promoters. 100%. And, and, and I'll tell you something I saw him do once. I, I'm going to bring it back in. Yeah. But, but I did a lot of work on the pageants for years on Miss USA, Miss Universe, and Miss Teen. And I judged a couple of pageants. And um, with, with Trump, we had just finished one of the pageants. Literally finished it. Like two minutes, we're off the air. We walk into the ballroom where they have this big party afterwards. And he walked up and grabbed the mic and he said, the ratings are in. It is the single greatest ratings of the pageant of all time. Maybe the most watched show. Ever. He just said all this stuff and everybody went nuts. And I turned to the executive um, who was next to me and I said, this hasn't even aired in the West Coast yet. <laughs> you know, it's only aired on, on the East Coast. He's a con and, man. And we won't get the ratings till tomorrow, right? And the exec looked at me and said, yeah, but everyone's happy. And I just thought, wow, 
to be able to walk up and just do that, whether you despise it, hate it or whatever, it, it, there's just a level of commitment he has to whatever he says at that point. So when Piers um, was doing the first uh, Celebrity Apprentice, he read a couple of his books. And I think one was called Think Big and Kick Ass. And uh, the other was called. Um, I mean, he didn't write Art them. Art of the Deal. He Art didn't the write them. He sat what? there, he talked, and he talked someone, and else, someone wrote else wrote them. But here's the point. Okay. So, what Piers did during the first Celebrity Apprentice is he essentially, every time they'd be in the boardroom and do something, he would quote Trump's book back to Trump. He wouldn't say, I'm quoting your book. Uh -huh. He would say, I think we should do this. And you can see if you go back and watch the episodes, he dug it. Trump would go, yeah, that makes sense. That sounds right. So he's kind of mirroring him in a way. That's exactly. It was an acting exercise. <laughs> yeah, it sure was. And, and he ended up. This is fascinating. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he ended up winning the first Apprentice. So I remember when Arsenio went on, and I worked with Arsenio and brought him back and produced his show. I told Arsenio, read this book and just do. This is your guide. Mm -hmm. and this is your Bible. It's like I'm giving you the the season, the series Bible for this. And Arsenio read it and pretty much did the same thing and <laughs> won. So, you know, the interesting thing with all those types of shows and when you're dealing with the Trumps of the world, he just played it like, you know, it's Crooked Hillary and it's, you know, Little Marco and it's, you know, Goofy, but you is know, this, whatever. Is this great? Is he using some, you know, marketing tactic kind of like the P.T. Barnum or is it just rude, obnoxious, and he's playing into the hate that is half of America? I think it's probably a little bit of both. I think it's a Jedi mind trick in one sense, but the way he does some of these things, I think any any normal person would go, I think that's rude and you should apologize. I don't think he cares. I think he has no. his agenda and he's going to push forward with his agenda. And What is his goal? But what is, what uh, is well, his goal? Well, I, I don't know what his goal is, but, you know. He I was, mean, is his goal to be so liked? Isn't that what he wanted? Then, if he then wanted he to should have just stayed like where he was. Sure. He shouldn't be president. No, he wants, he wants weird power and he... But no one, when I keep thinking about when this is all over and he's gone, how are, is he going to go on the talk shows? Are we going to hate him as much as we do now? Or will we look back at an old president like Bush? Now, I never hated we'll Bush. never, ever look back at him like a normal president. No, I, I hope not. There's, not, I, there's nothing normal about this. I, I, look, no. I think the interesting thing. Are you thing, freaked out? You know this man. You have worked behind the scenes with him. You know what exists. Okay, you know... You said he's C.T. Barnum. But he's a and dumb he guy. He's a dumb... I can't... I'll, I'll, tell me he's not... I'll, 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 well, you, he's you, dumb. Are you scared? Got, we have a lot of questions for you. You've got to be pretty... You have <laughs> Answer to be, them all. You have to be pretty smart to get elected president. So I, I can't say he's dumb or whatever. He was smart about how he went about getting elected. You mean becoming friends with Putin? This is... Well, when, that is smart. <laughs> well, hold on. When he went to... Uh, when they did the Miss USA... In Moscow, he Putin wouldn't see him. Like I knew the guys who were who mm -hmm. were with Trump at the time yeah, because, because my client you know, was producing those pageants. Right, wasn't was involved with these things, and he um, because Putin was masterminding. Oh, well, maybe whatever, Putin was whatever, like, I don't want to meet that they guy. Were doing, He's an but, idiot. but I'll tell you what I'm what scares me. What scares me are all the people who've been appointed. It's all of the people that are on the cabinet. That scares the hell out of me. You know, my my older brother retired uh, two years ago. He was a three star general. And the last job he had, he essentially oversaw all of the uh, U.S. Army bases around the world. So he was stationed in Fort Sam Houston, and he was also stationed at Fort Myer, Virginia, where Arlington is, where Arlington Cemetery is. And three or four times, his name has been on the list to run the VA. You know, we have, you know, we both have large families. Yeah. You have your brothers and your sisters, and yeah, you know, sometimes you like them, and sometimes you don't like them, and stuff like right. that. And I have a complicated relationship with my brother Mike, but I love him to death. Right. And I am telling you. If we want to fix the VA, the, the you know the, the VA, he's the guy to do it because he already figured out how to make money through innovation, not through cuts. When he was running all the army bases, right? Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to go meet, and you know, in a press conference a few weeks back, the president named some interim guy and said, "Oh, you know, this guy's going to do it." So I don't know what how all these decisions get made. But, but, but it's I'm the, sorry, it's, would your brother even, um, this is an important question, would like, be, would he want to want to? Would, would he, he want, want to would be in this run? administration? I think Anyone he, I that think has he had would, anything to I do with he, this administration, even John Kelly, thinks they're going to come in and save us all. And they find out very quickly that they are their name is dirt and shit forever. Wendy, here's sorry, the thing. it's a, it's it's sullying your reputation. I think, but like the whole John Kelly thing, that he feels like he can go in and he has to help us. 
because he knows who's at the helm, right? That's how at least I think. I think, I think a lot of these people think they're coming in and they're going to help us. Okay, and then let's, they, get out yeah. of, let's get out of Beverly Hills for a second. Okay. Because I think a lot of the problems that we have stem from attitudes that we have within Beverly Hills, the entertainment industry, or in New York. Okay. We got to fix the VA. I agree with you. 100%. My brother wants to. My brother wants to fix the VA, and if he had to work for Satan to do it, he, he would do it. He would do it because, look, I I'm very patriotic. I support the country. That doesn't necessarily mean I support all these representatives. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, that we would be in agreement with that. Okay, so I, I'm not looking for the downfall so, of our country. So, I'm worried. So, well, we are, we're all worried, and right. part of, part of the reason is a lot of really good people won't run for office. And as a lifelong Democrat, which I am, the toughest thing for me was watching some of the candidates that we put up. You know, the moment that, look, I, I would love to have a female president. Well, I was never going to support Hillary Clinton. I've met her. I've studied her. She is, she could, I wouldn't have put her up. When she couldn't get the nomination from Barack Obama in 2008, at that point, that should have told everybody, we do not want to run this woman. And we ran a person who felt she was entitled to be president. And when you get out of Los Angeles and the entertainment industry and everybody who's full of crap out here, and you get out of New York and all the people who are snobby with all the things that they do mm -hmm. in that area, and you talk to real people around the country, they didn't like her and they were not going to vote for her. But do you think she got a bad rap or do you really, really no, think no. she's a bad person? I do think she's a bad think, person. You don't think she's done good? No, I think she's terrible. I her, think she, her, I, all her years of service. I think she's terrible. And I think she's a hypocrite and I think she's a liar. And I don't believe anything. Wow. That's, that's my feeling with her. And if we're going to, as a Democrat, if we're going to put up a Bernie Sanders or an Elizabeth Warren or we're going to put up Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. you hear these different names, it, you're going to have Republicans in the White House for a long time. We have to, it, we, they're good people who won't run because they've been to a strip club or they've been divorced or they. Wait, I'm sorry. Who's the president? Mm -hmm. I know. I know. But, but just because he's a Democrat, but, but here's, but here's, but here's, he set the bar so low. I think he uh, could pretty much maybe, Paul, Paul, I don't want to say what you could do and you could probably become president I, now because the bar has been set so Paul, low. Paula, yeah. it's interesting because I'm in agreement with you here. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. He doesn't care what you say about him. He really doesn't care. And that's the thing. So Really? You don't if, think his ego is like, I want everyone to love me? Well, I think he wants everyone to love him, but I don't think he cares what they say. I think okay. he, I think whatever so they say. So then what's his he, deal with Stormy? He, he, Why he, does he care about her? I, I don't know the full story no. about that stuff. And maybe there's a different reason. But what I do know is this. I think, you know. She knows things. Well, <laughs> you're probably right. My intuition I, speaks. <laughs> I believe some people hear what they want to hear. And you can criticize him as much as you want. And he goes, they love me. It was, it right. was when I watched this gentleman walk up two minutes after a show ended mm -hmm. that hadn't aired on the West Coast and said, the ratings are in, it's the greatest thing ever. It, I went, he, he knows no shame as far as that goes. He knows oh, no shame. But if you go back and you look at the campaign, uh, Jeb Bush had $90 million going into the campaign and he took them out in like, like four weeks. Okay. He, took, he took all these people. But the point is, Usually the way you get elected is you have this huge war chest and then you run the thing through. Mm -hmm. I think Hillary got the Democratic nomination, A, because she manipulated the party, as we know, and B, because she had a huge war chest and she used it. And Katy Perry and Gaga, like everybody got up and it was this great big thing. And what she didn't understand is if you want to get elected, you go to Wisconsin. If you want to get elected, you go to Michigan. If you want to get elected, you go to Ohio. But there's a problem right there. So those three places are the only places that matter. No. California was... But it all, seems like that. And that's it's, not good. Well, it's not. The, the, the truth is everything matters, but there's certain places that you know are going to go red and they're going to go blue. Right. And there was also some voter tampering that went on in some of these states you mentioned. I, so. I, be, I believe there's been voter tampering in almost every U.S. election going back to oh, Adams. Wait, and do you agree that we need paper ballots? How about a show of hands? What? How about a show of hands? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, 100%. By acclamation. But I just think the Republicans are going to go for that, especially when they have... No, you know, because now. they're... The whole... Uh, this splitting California into three states... Oh, that's all Russia. It, that's not Russia. That's designed... Hold on a second. That's designed that. because... Yeah. What? Because, because if you... If Martin North... North <laughs> one, one part of California will stay liberal, and then two parts are more conservative. And there will be... The conservatives in the country would love 
to see California split into three states because it weakens the electoral count of California. Yeah. And th that will help them. The dumbest thing we can do, in my opinion, is split California into three states. That, oh, absolutely. That's not going to happen. It's on the ballot. It's Russian backed. No. I, I read that. There's I know. no it's way. It's on the ballot. We're it's, not changing the states. We'll have oh, to do with the flags like, over. Just like there was it would no take way Donald Trump of, is going to become president. It's I know we said that thing. too. It's but, just like Brexit, the same thing. But if this you do it, if you do it in their three, and their three, ca three Californias instead uh -huh. of one, we'll have 52 and it'll work perfectly in a deck of cards. There's that. No, we, they're, they're, they're stupid good. things that happen all the time like that. And then there'll be a whole big debate on it and talk radio will well, be all about What it. happens is we all forget to go vote. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. I mean, how many Democrats go, oh, I don't have to vote. It's never, you know. It's crazy. Who, who are you the most worried about? It sounds like you have a lot of concerns about who he's surrounded himself with. The who? cabinet, the cabinet scares like, all, all, all of them. All of them. All of them. Okay. Pruitt? But every every day, there's some new ridiculous. At what point does does the, that guy kick it? I, I, and, what, and, what, and I want to hear like and what, Betsy. The, you obviously have a very close relationship with Piers. Right. What does Piers think behind the scenes? I want to know. Like, I know he tries to be fair, mm -hmm. but like, does he think this man's a freaking lunatic? Yeah, I, I was wondering about that in the news. Well, they're they're, really they're, they're friends. I don't think he thinks he's a lunatic. I think he thinks he's a really smart marketer. Uh, he doesn't press. fear for our world because of this man and his freaking tweets. Well, you'd have to ask Pierce. I really wish I call could. him. Can we call Pierce? Can you <laughs> text Pierce right now? I'm pretty sure okay. he's. I'm pretty sure he's watching a World Cup game. Right now. Okay, yeah. That's but, true. but when when he's here, Pierce will be here later this summer. With, whether he does, will he come chit chat with us? Whether he does your show or not, I'm, I'm sure we will all go out and go and drink some things. That's yeah, always the good time exactly. to talk to him. I would. No, it's totally you know, be down. You know what's interesting? It's. A friend of mine who worked very as close. long as you're there with us, because yeah, of I'm, course like, I need you to protect me. <laughs> okay. No, he loves you. Um, it's um, the interesting thing is a friend of mine who worked very closely with the president when he was at NBC said, you know, there are two Donald Trumps. There's the one who goes out and says all this other stuff, and then there's the other person who can listen to something and distill it down fairly quickly and go, I think we should do this. I, um, I don't believe it. But I'm just saying these are from people who've worked very very closely with him. Well, he's what, a showman. He he turns it on. When the cameras are on, for sure. I mean, maybe. I just. I but you, I, you, but you have to be these days. If FDR ran in a wheelchair, you wouldn't get elected. Yeah, I get that. Did you happen to watch? I always talk about mm -hmm. this, but I think it's required viewing for all Americans. I say this all the time. Um, there's an episode. There's a sorry. There's a Netflix series called Dirty Money. Oh, so good. Haven't seen it yet. Okay. Oh. There's it's there's six self-contained episodes, all about different totally fucked up things in our country pharmaceuticals. Oh, okay. The very last one is called The Con Man, The Confidence Man. Interesting. It's about Trump. Every American needs to watch this because what you said was exactly on the money that he is P.T. Barnum. He is a snake oil sa mm -hmm. salesman. He's a fraud from the very early days. And watching this incredible documentary of everything that existed you know, up till now, it's just mind blowing that this man is yeah. running our country. It's very scary. I, I, well, it's like, did you ever see the movie Elmer Gantry? No. no. So Elmer Gantry is this great movie from you know years and years ago. And I think it was Burt Lancaster played Elmer Gantry and Shirley Jones was a very young, uh, gorgeous Shirley Jones was like a prostitute in it. And she kind of brings about, it's, it's the weird parallels to, and, and Shirley won an Academy Award, a Best Supporting oh. Actress for it, but there are weird parallels between these things that happened in the 40s and 50s in these movies and what has now happened now. It's really interesting. If you get a chance, you know, watch it because you'll see it's it's the same thing. He's a shuckster. He's a snake oil. So I, I will watch it along with the one that my daughter's like, Mom, you have to watch. You have to watch is, and I haven't seen it yet. You guys may have Hands Made Tale. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, Lex is like, Mommy, it, you have to watch it. It is so close and so scary. And every time I finish Danny Nucci, do you know Danny? He's my yeah, husband. Of course, yes. Every time we finish an episode, I go, I hate men. I hit him. He's like, I got it. I got it. <laughs> But I can't. Seen it, so. No, said, it is a show that if you watch, you are not having sex afterwards. Oh. Californication, complete opposite. You watch that show and you're like, mm, how you doing? And you turn it off and you're... <laughs> the show, my poor husband's like, I don't think we should watch this before we go to bed anymore. Because <laughs> let me tell you something, you've never been turned on less. And I'm like, it's your fault. It's his fault. I mean, I can't. Oh, anyway, you, well, it's I remember the, best. the I remember the movie when I saw the movie originally. 
that because Handmaid's Tale was based on a movie, and that movie creeped me out. I didn't know that. Which one? I think it was called Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. Oh, that's the so with, Well, I, think I, really, was, I will be watching. I think it was. It's so good. I think it was Natasha Richardson. Oh, all right. Well, anyway, we have to wrap this up in a minute. So I just, I, I guess my my final question to you is, what the hell? What do we do? What do we do? Do you have an answer? What do we do? Who do we call? What do we do? Who we well, text? I think we play more music. Is what we do. Okay. So, so I, something interesting happened in my life when I got sick, and when I came out of the hospital, I was in the hospital for 60, 70 days, and I came out and I was basically fired almost immediately, and all my whole life changed. And it took me a couple of years to rebound, get my health back, do a lot of different stuff, get my clients back. There were certain clients who stayed with me, Nancy O'Dell, Piers Morgan, uh, Glenn Weiss, who directs everything from the Academy Awards. Wait, the just, Emmys, just the pause Times. for one second. Yeah. Nancy O'Dell, like, wow, okay. I'd really love to ask what her take on all of this is right now. Well, uh, and we should remind people she was, uh, uh, she worked with Billy, right? No, there was- oh, they were talking about, is that they, you're talking They about were that? talking about her on the bus. That's true, yeah. Yes. There Sorry, was a, if you, I don't know if you want, no, you no, want me to a, ask that, but I mean, no, there was a, there they was a, were talking about moving on her like a bitch or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. you know, I I can't remember the, the exact quote, but Trump was talking about that. Billy was just not fucking with the quarterback. I will repeat that. No, that's true. He, he was, you know what I mean? So it was Trump I've, talking I've, about I've worked with Nancy for over 20 years and she's an extremely close friend. And very professional. And she's, I love her. she's, she's wonderful. the most professional of she's almost anyone incredible. you'll ever meet. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing about Nancy, and, and she's like my sister, I and mean, we, we are very, very close. And I, you know, I, I think the world of her. And what was interesting was I got a call on a Friday. We were playing, you know, I started playing music again, which I used to do before I came to William Morris. And I'll talk about the band for one second. But I had a show up in um, Carpinteria. We were playing a big outdoor festival. And I'm driving up the coast with a friend of mine. And the phone rings. And it was a big reporter. And he said, can you comment on the story about Billy Bush, Access Hollywood, what Donald Trump said about Nancy O'Dell? And I didn't know anything about the story or anything. So I said, I'm going to call you back. I'll call you right back. I hung up. I you know, called my office. I said, I need to know everything You're right like, now. You're like, what the hell? And, Just what and, firestorm and I, happened? And I, and I tracked Nancy down. Right. And she was getting ready to go to this event right when it broke. And she had just heard. And I said, don't go to where you're supposed to go. Just basically go home. Let's figure out what's going on. Now, I knew, you know, when you're Nancy O'Dell and you are as beautiful as Nancy O'Dell is and as nice and as gracious and Southern and as charming as she is, you know, a lot of people, a lot of, you know, big People ask her out and hit on her and whatever. And she's always been such a pro in my experience with how she's handled it. So I knew that, that you know, Donald Trump, when he was doing things, would always flirt with her. But I never knew anything else. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there was anything else. I think it was just normal, it's his normal right. flirtatious he was behavior. Just vulgar that, behind the scenes. Yeah, that being said, locker room talk. Yeah. What, what we talked about and what Nancy did, and I have the tre tremendous amount of respect for what she did, is she said, I'm going to issue one statement. She did it on ET on the Monday. This story broke on a Friday. She addressed it, and that's it. And, she put, that. it, and she put it behind herself. Because, you know, the truth of the matter is, there wasn't really a story there. And she has a daughter and she's raising her daughter and she wants to raise her right. And she didn't want to get mixed up in any of this. And it was, you know, everyone was looking for right. something because it was mm -hmm. right before the election. And Nancy was like, I'm not going to be a foot, you know, a tabloid, you know, footnote. Yeah. I'm a professional in everything I do. I addressed it. Sometimes these things happen and we become the story. And in this particular case, there really is no story and I'm moving on. And that's it. Yeah. No, and I agree. And, and, and not that you have, you know, well, you probably, you know, have private conversations with her that you might know the, the insight as to what she thinks is a private citizen watching this catastrophe unfold. I have a similar, like, I'm just more curious, like, as she sees this unfold in the same way that I would really, really, really love to talk to Marla Maples. And I'd love to know, I know she has to sit back and she's got a gag order in her own brain because she's got a daughter that is, yeah. that she shares with him and she can't say what her truth is. Yeah. I would love to know what Nancy O'Dell thinks as a private citizen and you don't have to share right. it and I wouldn't ask you to, you know, do that. I'm curious if you want to go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, there's a, I, like I said, I don't think there's a story there to tell you No, the truth, but, but what does she think? What does she you think? Know, every, like, does she think like we do? Does she think, oh my God, what is happening I, to our world? Why is this man? He's crazy. You know, it's there's an interesting thing. 
is, he's more than crazy. He's he's he's, he's absolutely evil. By yeah. the by the way, think about something. I, I always say it's because you're an actress and a very successful actress, and you know I used to always say to people, they would say there was the great Henry Fonda quote, where Henry Fonda was asked, um, "Why do you like to act so much?" And he said, "Because I don't like Henry Fonda that much." <laughs> And I remember he said this on a talk show. That's great. He said, because I don't like Henry Fonda that much. Wow. And I really thought about that, you know, and, yeah. I, and as when I got in the business, because me getting into this business mm -hmm. was a complete fluke for me. And I got into the business and I, I was a musician and I realized, okay, well, I'm going to apply my skills, you know, figure out how to do all this stuff. And I just started meeting different people and I realized what you see on camera is not necessarily who the person is off camera. Some people, you know, I remember going down and seeing Johnny Carson when I first started at William Morris. And on camera, he was funny, and he was gracious, mm -hmm. and he was quick, and he was all these things. And then off camera, he'd walk down the hallway, and he was this quirky guy with ticks, mm -hmm. you know, doing, doing things like that. Yeah. And I started to learn pretty quickly, and you know this better than anyone, because you grew up around every, you know, your dad mm -hmm. managed, uh, was the agent for Marilyn Monroe, and did deals for Joe DiMaggio. I mean, the you know, secretariat, you know, the biggest figures of all time, yeah. you know, were in your living room as, as you were growing up. And people are very different, you know, and some, some like, remember the Megan, Megan Mullally uh, talk show when it went out on NBC after Will and Grace went up yes. there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. By the way, she was awful. She was terrible. It was one of the worst talk shows ever because we turned on the TV and we wanted to see Karen, the character from Will and Grace, right. who was right. hysterical and had the voice and she was great. She was quick. Megan wasn't. The person was not what the writers created. And in some cases, and in politics now, if I was running for office, and I don't think I would ever run for office because I don't think I, I don't think I could pass whatever you have to pass to, to, to do it. What do you have to pass? No. I, I don't know, but we have a bunch of adults that run. But I don't want to have to get up and talk about you know, an ex-wife or, you know, anything that's ever happened in my past. Right. I was an agent at William Morris. I was there for virtually 19 years. It is a ridiculously difficult job if you're going to be great at it. Mm -hmm. And it's a ridiculously difficult job. And you sacrifice a lot of your personal life because your clients don't care about you going to a high school reunion. They don't care about you going to a kid's recital. They don't care if you're sick. Your, oh, yeah. your client, for the most part, yeah. like 99%. Right. They want what they want when they want it. And if you don't give it to them, you've got these the same clowns at some other agency with the same haircut and the same suit mm -hmm. saying, oh, I can do this even better, blah, 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 blah. And nowadays, people don't sign clients based on the strength of what they do. They sign clients by telling them everything that's wrong that their other representation is doing. Right. And that's, I'm drawing a comparison here to when, when, when Donald Trump was running for president. Right. That's what he did to the Republican Party. Is he showed everything is wrong, 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 and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix and it. I'm going to fix it. And, and, and mm -hmm. the truth is, he didn't have to have a plan. He just scared the hell out of everyone and eliminated everyone. Remember when Richard Nixon ran and in, uh, in, he had the secret plan to I'm end the war? I was too young. I think I was too young, okay. but maybe not. So, yeah. so, but tell us. So, yeah. I know so, Rachel gives us a very good education on that. Yes, we so were good. Rachel okay. fans. Right, just saying. So I... Um, <laughs> You've got to throw that into every, every, single, every podcast. Yeah. So <laughs> I literally was a little kid. Yeah. And I remember Nixon had a secret plan to end the war. Well, there was no plan. He just told people that. And the Why? country, and the country was, was divided. And he got elected, and then he moved on to other stuff that, that you know, he... he so don't. tell them what they want to hear. That's well, the secret. That's what a lot of people do when they campaign. Yeah, I know. I don't when, like campaigns. Well, when, when I met um, Obama, uh, candidate Obama, Senator Obama came to the William Morris Agency. Yeah. And we had a meeting oh with God. him when, when he was oh running God. the first time, up at the Beverly Wilshire, which is now the side or whatever. Yeah. So we all went up there, and we had a meeting, and I started asking him specific questions as it related to the military because my brother was a general. Mm -hmm. So I started having these conversations and he just yesed me to death and then moved on. And he never addressed the stuff. I voted for President Obama twice. Mm -hmm. I gave money to his campaign. I did all the things that you do. And other than you know, killing Osama bin Laden, I can't tell you a whole lot that he accomplished. Um, Obamacare. By the way, and I love that. And I, I personally think that was not easy. All, all all medicine should be free here, 
that every everybody I don't disagree every with every, you. every person in the United States <laughs> socialism I, yeah. I believe yeah, is I, like yeah. I believe is entitled to an education and medical care. I I personally yeah, believe I that. do too yeah. and call us socialists but you yeah. know I you know, and you also know my stance on guns is uh, I think every gun, we should get rid of every single gun. All of them. Well, I we and, 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 and maybe we should all run. Can we run as a trio? Sure, that would work because we each have something different. Well, they're going to be three. Offer, they're going to be three states. I'll offer the passion. I'll offer they're the passion. They're going to be three right? three Californias. I have a pretty clean background. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> but I will tell you what was you interesting. Don't? No, well, I've been naked a few times. Oh, That's okay. That might help. By the way, <laughs> I was younger. Then. I think it works now. It worked for Kardashians. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I sold the Kardashians. I'll probably well, go. I'll go. probably go to hell for that. <laughs> but the um, what was interesting for me with a lot of you know a lot of stuff was when I came out of the health thing and William Morris and I got out, right. I looked at my life a few years back and I looked at it as if like my life was a bicycle and my front tire was on steroids. It was overinflated, my transactional tire. It was deal, 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 deal. That's all I was doing. I was getting all these things done and it was so full and so overfilled. If I had run over a sesame seed, it was going to burst. And I think that's pretty much what happened when I got sick. And I looked at my back tire, which was my creative tire, and I looked at it and I went, my, my back tire is flat. And I need to figure out how to redistribute the air in my life so this will, you know, this vehicle, this bike will ride and it'll be safe and I can get to the places I need to. So when I did it, I went back and I started playing music again. And I, some friends of mine who I started playing with back in the early 80s up in UC Santa Barbara when we were in college were still playing. and. You know, as a result, in the last uh, four years, we've done five five full albums. We've toured Europe several times, um, along with my friends, our drummer's Clem Burke. He's in Blondie. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That is the coolest. And it's just the greatest thing. So we're doing a, I, I don't know when this airs, but we've got a big show at the Troubadour on Sunday, the 24th. That Ooh, we're doing the we calling. should go. Let's go. You, you're From both, eight to nine. Let's you're, go. You're, both, you're both, both invited. Let's go. I and um, and um, we've been recording, and we've got, I've got CDs for you, albums. Oh. The new one's well, called like new one's called Anthems and Lullabies. The Tearaways. All right. Well, I the think tearaways. we have our answer. The answer to surviving Trump music. is music. Is music. Music. All right. Music does make the world go round. Oh, no, and I think it's time for us to say bye. I'm so sad. This is the end. I think we could talk. We'll probably continue this conversation. Yeah. And we will definitely continue when Pierce comes to town. We will have a pint or something like that. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for joining us on Mama Ticks, and we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.